I would like to see The Rock run the course because um, he's so big, right? Like, obvious, he's him. And the course is, I don't know that it's very kind to very large people, honestly. Like, if a guy is huge or a woman is huge and does the course and beasts it, I'm all the more impressed because it's normally like the tiny, very compact and toned mm -hmm. rock climbers, the gymnasts, who yes. uh, kind of like <laughs> down the spider the people. Yes. The the spider is. people. That is a great way to put it. Um, yeah. But the non spider people have a tough time flinging their massive bodies, you know, flying in the air and actually landing where they want to land. Um, so watching someone like Dwayne Johnson <laughs> attempt to do that would be goals. Hey guys, welcome on Into Drinks with Binks. I'm Julie Stewart Binks, and we are shooting this show on International Women's Day on Monday. And while it's only just a day, it's soon to be a year slash forever, but you know, a jaw jokes aside, we are always trying to promote and empower women uh, all the time on this show because A, they deserve it, and B, because when we sort of make our gender less of a, a defining factor of who we are, then who we are and what we do gets to shine through. And it's not just like, oh, there's the girl. It's, oh, there's that awesome person. So hopefully that rambling made some sense there on uh, Here Are Drinks With Things. Today's guest is someone that I met many years ago in LA, she had just moved to LA and we met through a mutual friend, Aaliyah Jasmine Savani, who was also a broadcaster. And since that moment, she has just absolutely flourished and shine and she's just killing it in, in every single different way. I'm very pleased to be able to welcome on uh, Emmy Award winning journalist, TV host, for Access Hollywood, also sideline reporter for American Ninja Warrior and host of Hot Happy Mess, Zuri Hall. Thank you, Zuri, for joining us here today. It's been a while since we've we've seen each other and we've yeah. caught up and I appreciate you making the time to chit chat about everything in your life. Of course, yeah, and thanks for having me on the show. I'm excited to be here and it has definitely been years. I'm starting to feel it in my knee. I've got one that's going right now. So uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to catch up. It's been like half a decade. It's it's more dramatic when you say half a decade. It's been like five years. Zuri, congratulations Thank on you. everything that you've accomplished. So proud watching mm -hmm. you from afar. And here on Drinks with Banks, we of course have a, a drink. What have you chosen for us to sip on today? Well, you know, it is all of... 3.08 p.m. here in Los Angeles. So naturally, whiskey coke. <laughs> Love it. Okay, well, it is 6.08 here um, in New York City, and we've got whiskey coke as well. So cheers to you. To you. And um, before we sip, oh. what, do you, what do we want to toast to today? Oh, gosh. I mean, I think we should toast to women everywhere, right? It's International Women's Day, and it's a celebration of us, so I will always drink to that. All right, to women. Here, here. Let's go. We're taking over, slash. We mm -hmm. already have. You just don't know mm. yet. Mm. That's wow. nice. Goes down real smooth. Oh. Um, Zuri, yeah. so much going on in entertainment world, ironically enough, because it is a pandemic. Let's just like start with that first. You were an absolute dream at the Golden Globes. You're, you know, working the red carpet. Your dress was fantastic. I love watching your Instagram stories of getting ready because I'm like, this is the coolest job in the world. Uh, what has it been like, first and foremost, to sort of like cover entertainment news when shows, productions, TV, uh, uh, movies were all sort of like put on hold during this time? Yeah. Um, I mean, at the start of the pandemic, it was, we were just going through our version of what everyone else was going through, which is like, what do I do with my hands? Like, I just don't know, like, what am I here for? What's the point of it all? So for the first month or so, I mean, whatever everyone else was going through was kind of my reality. I was on the couch, like, what is, what do I do now? Um, and then we actually, we got back into a groove way faster than I expected, but just in a new way. Um, and so we were doing all of our interviews similar to how we're doing this via Zoom and, and FaceTime. And like, it was the weird wild, wild west phase of being in entertainment news where for a month, 
I was like, am I about to like FaceTime with Taraji P. Henson? This is the most like bizarre way to be doing interviews. And I remember when we first started doing it, it was kind of wild because even the celebs who you're interviewing are like, this is new. I don't know how to like, well, how does this work? Like, when do I get off the phone? Like, do I just hang up on mm -hmm. the interviewer? So they would talk to us forever because you know, how you get trapped on the phone with someone, you don't want to be rude. And it's like, oh, like, all right. Oh God, I think the kids are calling. It's like, you don't have kids. Yeah. So we would get on these calls and just talk forever to the point that even our bosses were like, hey guys, love the conversations, love that you're doing like 30 minute deep dives. It's a three minute package. So we can just kind of like ask them the questions like it's a junket and then just get the heck out of there. But they're on FaceTime or they're on Zoom. And so there's this sense of um, familiarity. Like mm -hmm. Brad Pitt is used to FaceTiming his friends but probably not like an Access Hollywood journalist or an E! News right. correspondent. And so initially we were getting really long interviews because of that. So it was really nice. Um, now there is, there's a method to the madness and the, the powers that be, the studios have, have jumped in and, and figured out how to mimic our in real life junkets and red carpets virtually. So it's actually really impressive. Um, so there's a new normal, but it's normal now and, and I'm mm. working and I'm, I'm busy and, and I, I'm really blessed to really be back in the groove. It kind of almost sounds like sports in a way, because that's mm -hmm. uh, at least like now finding, oh, sort of like the Zoom interviews, the Zoom yeah. press conferences, like the sort of press junkets in a way. But yeah, there is that familiarity where they're like, okay, well, I mean, like I've got literally nothing else to do. Right. So why not like Jennifer, oh, me yeah. and Jennifer Aniston talk to you for like five hours and, mm -hmm. and you're like, yeah, this is like great info. Um, but then you're also like, okay, I have to like do other things. Like oh, I don't want to yeah. be on screen time this whole time. <laughs> um, but pandemic aside, I've always found entertainment reporting really fascinating because I do liken it to sports because I, I mean, I am so fascinated with how you guys prepare because you have, let's like take away the pandemic, but in a normal year, you have, you know, celebs coming down the red carpet. You got to know your stuff um, and you've got awkward people too because they're like sometimes not really cool in real life. They're like right. actors and, and whatnot. What sure. kind of, what, what would surprise us maybe about like the preparation that you need to put into to be game ready for when you're on the red carpet and someone is walking down there and your producer, someone's like, that's so-and-so. And you're like, uh, I don't know who that is. Or like, it's a director or whatever. Like what's yeah. your, your plan? Um, well, people would be surprised to know that it's utter chaos and the photos that they see on the red carpet, the sexy Getty images, like that is one snapshot in time that is not at all indicative of the hot mess that is just swirling around the carpet like i promise you that they also would be surprised to know that it is not nearly as luxurious for us particularly on the other side of the carpet um as one might think i am normally like hopping in the uber trying to find them like can you drop me off here oh it's closed because it's hollywood boulevard and this is a massive world premiere duh i forgot sorry i'll walk in these four inch hills that I shouldn't have put on because we both know that I don't walk in hills. And then I'm like power walking with like my note cards in one hand and my heels are hurting my feet. And I'm trying to convince the guy at the door that I'm supposed to be in the world premiere, but he <laughs> doesn't have the credential list and blah, blah, blah. So like all of that inevitably happens just about every time I go to one of these carpets. And then we get there, we get in our position. It's very shoulder to shoulder. It's very Hunger Games-ish. <laughs> I always say that and people are like, oh my God, what do you do for a living? But it's fun, Hunger Games. It's not like, who's going to die? Oh, no, it is. It is. It is. It's very I, I'm not, and again, I'm not an entertainment reporter, but I was at it. I was at like a, whatever there were, it was an entertainment sort of sportsy thing. And I, we were late as Fox. And I remember a network was like, sorry, you missed yeah. your chance, honey. You ain't getting in here. And I was yeah. like, wait, what? Hello. And, and but yeah, it's, it's cutthroat. Yeah, it is. It definitely is. Um, but in the midst of all that chaos does come really cool opportunities to, you know, talk to and connect with people whose work you admire or respect. And, and it feels really good when you get something out of them. Yes. Um, yeah. You get something and you get to like chat with like George Clooney and people that are just like super famous and you have to be like, this is just 
this is regular day. And I'm sure at this point it is regular day for you. But I have a whole lot more I want to get to with Zuri Hall. And uh, not just in terms of entertainment, but she also has a sports background. So stay tuned. We're here on Drinks with Thanks. We got a little whiskey and Coke here. Let's do it. Hey guys, welcome on back to Drinks and Thinks. I'm JSB. We've got Zuri Hall here from Access Hollywood, American Ninja Warrior. She also has her own podcast, Hot Happy Mass, which is awesome, I will have to say, and we're going to get into that in a bit. But when I first met you, Zuri, what really stood out to me, as we mentioned the sports stuff, is that you started in sports. Like, you were the in-arena host for the Indiana Pacers, and you were in, you worked there when it was Paul George's second year in the league, yeah. and they were a pretty good team. Um, mm-hmm. Kata, mm-hmm. ask you, like, what sort of, like, your lasting memory of that time that you covered the Pacers the biggest lasting memory is playoffs like being witness to that you know um to see LeBron taking the court the the heat and um just being like how the hell did I get here like what is (laughs) you know like when I would the cool thing about being the in-game arena host is you're behind the scenes with everyone else. So when the guys are coming out of the tunnel, I'm just there with my little microphone, just watching them like go uh, by and like into this really amazing um, court experience. That's very different, obviously from the normal season, the regular season. And so even in that moment, and to be clear, like at that time, like I wasn't a huge, like sports fan in the sense of like bleeding sports, but I definitely, I went to the Ohio State University. So I bleed Scarlet and Gray. I love my football team. Um, I love basketball. My brothers played it. I grew up watching it, but um, I only say that to say as someone who wasn't like diehard, that right there, I was like, this is, this is unreal. Like I remember the first tunnel run that I saw where the guys are coming out and I'm witnessing, you know, the, the start of this playoff experience and to just be a part of it, let alone on the court for so much of it, um, which is really special. It was a cool time to be in Indianapolis. The Pacers were killing it. Um, the, the work that I did with the Pacers led to me being the host for the Super Bowl village the year that it came to Indianapolis in 2012, I think it was. Um, so it was just, and then I ended up emceeing for the minor league baseball team, the Indianapolis Indians. So it was this really cool year and a half to two years of just being fully immersed in um, not just the local news world, but in the sports world of Indianapolis. And they have so much to offer in, in that department. So it was cool. You decided not to sort of pursue sports. You decided to then go entertainment. Um, yeah, because the truth is, like, I never wanted to pursue sports. I've always appreciated sports. I love watching sports. I'm a fan. But entertainment was always, like, my biggest love. So I've, I've known from a very early age, one, I wanted to be the entertainer, right? Like, I, I was a writer first. I was in music. I sang. I sang. I, I wrote songs. I performed. And I acted. I minored in theater. I did a lot of commercial work when I was in the Midwest. Um, so. So while I loved that experience in Indy, I just knew I loved entertainment more. And so it's like, if I have to commit my life to a thing, if I'm going to commit the next 10 to 20 years to a thing, I'd rather it be entertainment and then kind of enjoy the intersection of sports and entertainment. Mm -hmm which honestly has happened, you know, like I cover the ESPYs out here in LA for my, my entertainment news outlets. A lot of times these sports figures are making news that we're covering on access Hollywood. And so it's really cool because I I feel like there's so much in the intersection. So I kind of get the sports fix while also being able to talk about the thing that, you know, lights me up the most, which is uh, art, which is entertainment news, which is, you know, creative people telling creative stories. Yeah, you do have everything sort of like the Venn diagram of sports and entertainment. And that is perfect for your other job that you have right now with American Ninja Warrior. Mm-hmm. What, uh, as you're entering your third season, what celebrity would you like to see run this course? Ooh, that's a good one. I've never been asked before. that before. Hmm. I would like to see the rock run the course because um he's so big right like obvious he's him and the course is 
I don't know that it's very kind to very large people, honestly. Like if a guy is huge or a woman is huge and does the course and beasts it, I'm all the more impressed because it's normally like the tiny, very compact and toned mm -hmm. rock climbers, the gymnasts who yes. um, kind of like <laughs> down the spider the people. Yes. The the spider side. people. That is a great way mm -hmm. to put it. Um, yeah. But the non spider people have a tough time flinging their massive bodies, you know, flying in the air and actually landing where they want to land. Um, so watching someone like Dwayne Johnson <laughs> attempt to do that would be goals. That would be television magic. And yeah, I see it. Yeah, I, I can't even imagine now when you say that. First, I was like, of course, The Rock would be able to crush it. Then it's like, no, The Rock would not be able to like swing his way into there. Wow. Um, but rock on the shrinking steps, we have these tiny little things your massive feet have to land on and like balance to get above a pool of water. I don't want to say he's going down. All respect to Mr. Johnson. I'm just saying I would love to see him conquer the course. I think it would be fun to watch. Yeah, we, we you know, everyone loves rock. Rock's great. Uh, <laughs> we have a lot more you want to get to with Zuri. Um, just, I want to know if you've even done the course or if you've been allowed to say that you probably aren't. But we've got a whole lot more we want to get to in Zuri Hall here on Drinks with Binks. Don't go anywhere. We're sipping on a whiskey and a Coke. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Drinks with Binks. I'm JSB. We've got Surrey Hall here from Access Hollywood, and we are sipping a little whiskey and Coke. We were just discussing, uh, we're talking a lot of sports here with an entertainment person, but um, <laughs> you are dating uh, Sean Culkin, uh, tight end mm -hmm. in the NFL, who is going to yeah. be playing with the Chiefs this upcoming yeah. season. And what is one thing that would surprise people about what it's like to date an NFL player? Hmm. What is it like to date an NFL player? Um, I mean, the, honestly, the first thing that comes to my mind is just how I can't keep anything in the fridge. Like I just before this went to the fridge and was like, oh, what's for dinner? Oh, Sean ate everything. And the thing is, I never see him eating it, which makes it all the more frustrating because we live together right now. And I'm like, where is all of the food going? And I don't know if I can kind of like bleed me out, but it's like, all of the meat, all of the carbs. It just, he's like a, oh my God. I've clearly no one has ever asked me this and I'm just so excited to get it out because I'm so frustrated by the lack of food in my kitchen. Um, so the biggest thing is maybe the obvious, which is that they just eat a freaking ton of food. It's a lot to, it is a full-time job trying to keep this man fed. So I can only imagine. And you have always been someone that puts up like food on Instagram and like you're a cook and, and you seem to have an incredible metabolism. Um, cause I'm like so envious of everything that you are putting out there. And also you can cook. Let's just put it. I love to cook. I do I love to cook. cook. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Um, okay. So what has he, um, uh, he must be ex extremely excited to be going to play with Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I mean, that's super exciting. And more than anything, it's a homecoming, I guess you could say. He played for Mizzou, uh, so that is very much a part of his heart, and he's excited to go back to the Midwest. I'm from Ohio, so for us, just as a couple, the Midwest makes sense and is exciting. Um, and he's excited to get back to Missouri. So, yeah, uh, Mahomes in, in the season this fall is a very exciting thing to think about, and we'll see how it goes, but I'm excited for him. I'm proud of him. Awesome. Okay, well, let's get back to you, Zuri, because it's International Women's Day. We gave our time to the dude. Uh, yeah. Back to you, your podcast, Hot Happy Vest, which is a lot of fun. Um, it's just very open, honest. And you're talking about relationships. You're talking about manifestation. Um, what do you want people to get out of it when they listen to it? Yeah, um, for me, the podcast is really just a really fun, chill, not that serious space for millennial women, really everyone, men, women, whatever age. But my my focus is catering to millennial women, not unlike ourselves, um, to just kind of celebrate our magic in the middle of life's messes. For most of my 20s, I, I am ambitious, super ambitious, always have been. But in my 20s, I was so just like grind, 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 head to the pace just go, go, go. And I looked up and I had amazing things to show for it in my work life, but nothing to show in any other area of my life. Not personally. I wasn't creating memories with the people I love most because I was like, I got to work. I got to work. I got to work. And so this is really like, how do we do best life 
minus the burnout? How do we create a space where we can feel good with where we are, no matter where that is, even if it's not where we thought we would be? Um, And so this is really about that. It's all about mindfulness. It's about not taking ourselves or our lives so seriously that we can't have fun and laugh at just sort of the absurdity of it all because none of us get out of it alive. So we really just need to relax. I know that's super morbid. I can be a little dark with my humor. No, it's not morbid at all. It's like super inspiring because it's about like being able to be like sort of happy with how the journey is and where it's going. Mm -hmm. Because I know what you mean with that. It's like putting off, uh, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. Like I have to have this right now. And actually like, I did that. It didn't necessarily work out for me. I mean, uh, sure it did. I have my own show, but for you, Zara, (laughs) you're killing it. Um, and you just, uh, you accomplished your dreams. Like you, you were like, you were like bucket list done. So what then is, what is your dream or a dream now? Um, you know, I've started to get into the habit of, instead of asking myself what's next, I'm just looking at what's now. And I think that is the biggest breakthrough of the last few years of my own self-work, of therapy, of hot, happy mess. I am so excited for whatever will be. I have no idea what will be. Do I have plans? Of course. Do I have a bucket list and a new vision board? A hundred percent. But instead of like harping on or locking in on what I want next, I've worked my butt off for so long that I really just want to look up and look back at how far up the mountain I've climbed. And so I'm like, this is awesome. This is really great. I'm talking with you. We've both done amazing things in our careers and to be, you know, coming full circle and talking about that is exciting. I love my life in LA. I love my friends. I'm in a, an amazing relationship. Like I'm just happy about this. Um, so I'm trying to practice honoring the current moment by not, stepping too far outside of it but i certainly have things you know in the works and i'd I'd love to write more that was one of my first loves so i'd I'd love to do that in a more official capacity and eventually daytime talk and and more in the lifestyle space Uh, but i'm really happy with where i am and and it it took a lot to get to the point where i could say that and mean it and not secretly be like but it'd be better if this, like, I'm really, I'm really happy and I'm content. Well, that is incredible to hear. Uh, we got to take a quick time out. We'll be back with more with Surrey Hall. Don't go anywhere. We've had an awesome time drinking and banking here with Surrey Hall on drinks with things and Surrey. Can you tell us where we can find you and all of your awesome content next? Yeah, if you guys want to check out Hot Happy Mess, you can go wherever you get your podcast, like that age old line, Boy, Heart Radio app or Spotify or whatever. Um, so you can check out Hot Happy Mess. We have new episodes every Monday. And then Instagram and Twitter, really Insta is where I'm the most active and I love to engage with people. So at Zuri Hall. Love that. And very quick cue. I know we have the Grammys coming up. What's like one thing you're you're pumped about for the Grammys? Oh, oh honestly, like it's the fashion. Like I, I hesitate to say it, but the truth is I love the, the red carpet fashion at the Grammys because all of the music related ones, it, there's so much fun that is had. Mm. There's so many risks that are taken, you know, like with the Oscars and the Globes and stuff like that. Sometimes people play it a little safer. Honestly, not this last Globes. I kind of feel like it was a free for all. Uh, but the Grammys, particularly, you always see, you know, our favorite musicians in some really awesome looks. So I'm excited for that. And then the performances and 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 all the the good stuff that normally comes with the ceremony. I didn't realize it was creeping up so quickly, but I I have no idea what day it is anymore. Other than the anniversary of year one of the pandemic. All right, guys, we've had an awesome time with Zuri. You know where to find all of our other awesome content. That is on YouTube at Fubo Sports. And until next time, guys, bottoms up, bitches. Yeah. <laughs>